everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today this is part two of our black and white landscape that I did a little while ago. And of course, you know, it looks really pretty just in black and white like this. We've got these very soft mid-tones of gray going on. And if you want to keep yours just like this, uh, it would look really, really nice hanging in any home and match any decor. However, you guys know that I love color and I'd love to show you guys how you can take a black and white image like this, a painting like this in grayscale and filter over it with color. So that's what I'm going to be showing you guys how to do today. So hit subscribe and let's begin this video. Now I've got a few colors on my palette here that I'm going to be using and I've been painting so much lately. I've got sort of a messy palette, but I'll go over all the colors below in the description of the video as well if you don't catch them all here today. I've got phthalo blue, cadmium yellow light hue, neon orange, neon pink, titanium white, and turquoise bright aqua green. Of course, use any other variations of these colors that you want. I happen to just really, really love my uh, neon colors and they make really pretty pastel colors as well as they're really nice and transparent and work uh, wonderfully for creating these little filters over black and white paintings. So what I want to start with today is the background and I think I want to add just a little bit. I'm going to be having a lot of green, blue, like turquoise and I think it would be really nice to balance it out and have some complementary warmth of peach and some pink. So I'm gonna be using today uh, this angle brush or dagger brush, but you can really use any brush you want for these bigger areas to cover. Um, the only one that you wanna be sure to be using a small brush for is the little cabin. I'm gonna be adding some little details in the windows, adding little bits of light in there, but you could, most definitely use just the very corner and tip of this dagger brush. That's why I really like this brush. It's really versatile. So the first thing that I want to do is get my brush wet. Of course, we need a little bit of water. I'm going to take some white and I'm going to take some of this neon orange. It's actually a uh, neon luminous yellow warm. And it looks it's more on the orange side so that's why I'm saying orange so I'm gonna do a little bit or just add a little bit of that neon pink in there too so I get this beautiful warm coral color with a little bit of water remember and I'm gonna start lightly coming in from the top pink now be a little bit more generous so we've got a very pretty sunset happening it's really fun doing these black and white or grayscale paintings first and then coming in and adding color I always say it's like uh, coloring a big form of a coloring book for grown-ups Add a little hint of this in the waterfalls as well. So see with the how we have these light and dark areas, we've got our highlights and shadows already and our mid-tones. So the hard work is done for us. All that guesswork is done now. It's just going to happen on its own when we pull our color over. Once dry, wherever we have the bright white, we're still going to have those highlights. They're just going to be tinted with some of this color. It's going to be nice to kind of add some of this sunset color along the stairway. That staircase going up there. And maybe a little bit over the house. And then just wipe a little bit of it off. And you can definitely use a smaller brush. Um, for that if you want. So it's up to you how much color you want to add. 
I think even like this, it looks quite pretty. I'm gonna wash my brush off. And I'm just gonna take a little bit off of this side. See, so you can catch that right away and just with a bit of water, take it off. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is take just my yellow. I'm gonna thin it out with water. I only use water for my medium. It works well, doesn't cost anything, easy cleanup, and it still will dry quickly enough for me to be able to add the next colors that I want. So I'm gonna show you how pretty this will look over top of black and gray. It'll dry a little bit darker. And we'll be left with a very natural green gold color that's very earthy. And I'm going to scumble a little bit of that yellow out of my brush. So it kind of blends in with the background and it will kind of give us that indication that there's more continuous foliage and trees back there in the distance. So I'll pick up a little bit more. Remember to add just a little bit, just enough water to kind of be able to pull an easy brush stroke. But if it's dripping, then you've got way too much I usually have my canvases locked in with a little bar that goes over the top, but I, it casts a shadow here and I'm going to be painting up here. So I'll just try to be careful that I don't push too hard with my brush. Otherwise it's going to cause my canvas to move around. I'm going to add a little bit here around these waterfalls and you just go right over top of the black and along the edge here where we'd have mossy like a carpet of moss at the at the base here the base of the trees and then where the other little waterfalls are starting maybe we've got a little bit of moss over these rocks right here and just a little bit around the edge the side of the water And you could paint this black and white image three or four different times and use three to four different color combinations. You could just go over the entire thing with one color and paint seasons. You could do it all in a soft green for more of like a springtime, summer. And then in the fall, you could go over with some beautiful crimson red or a bright vivid orange. You could do light blue over the whole thing and that will give you a wintry, frosty kind of temperature and mood to your painting. I'm gonna come in here. more of that yellow. Now if these trees, because they have more white, if they dry yellow, then all I'll do is add a little bit of green over top. Now I would use, or you could use a little bit of black too, but I think it's more fun to come in after with color. Uh, you could use blue to go over top to make it darker here. But I'm going to see how this dries. I think it might dry a nice uh, bright, bright yellowy green shade, which is going to be uh, perfect. Now the next color that I want to use is some turquoise. I'm not even going to wash my brush out, but I do want to take a little bit of water. 
like I have been, right? Just to thin that paint out a little bit. And especially with uh, turquoise has white in it. So I want to water this down so it's more transparent. And I, I want to bring and pull in a little bit of turquoise in this area, kind of around the middle. I've got that pretty pink glow from the sunset. It's just about incorporating a few different colors. And you could add it anywhere you want. This is just where I'm gonna add mine. And of course, if you haven't seen the first part of this video, I'll leave a link below, but I am gonna attach it at the, the beginning as well of this video so it kind of continues one after the other so this water's coming from somewhere we've got to sneak some bit of green in here a little bit on the side. Okay, the next color I'm going to use, and I'm just going to get a little bit of water in my brush. I'm going to use this really pretty phthalo blue. And just start To add this around the edges and at the base of some of these waterfalls. Now it's really pretty to um, overlap the colors. You can filter over another color that you filtered over the black and white with so you can just keep layering as long as it's in thin amounts. So I'm just gonna kind of wash the excess on my brush. I still have a little bit of water in there. So if I go over part of that pinky coral color, it's gonna take on a very soft lavender shade. So it's up to you how much color you want. Sometimes I like to just take a little bit of each turquoise and the phthalo. And say you want to add more color, you can definitely go over and do that. It's just going to add some more depth, right? I like to have it darker around the edges and then have it nice and bright, that light drawing our eyes into the center. And we can add it just a little bit more and change the temperature of the trees up if we want by doing um, a little scumble of that phthalo blue over there. Now that I feel like is competing too much with the water, so I'm gonna wash my brush out and Gently scumble this off, push that back down, and just wipe the excess off on a towel. Now I've just got a little bit of that. And I think that's nice, but I want to add a little bit of turquoise right in here coming up to the beginning of that waterfall. I think I'm gonna do the same here. And then pull a little bit. And 
notice how I turn my brush this way. This will give me a little bit more control so I don't cover up all of the soft um, sunset color in there, the brighter color. I know this is going to dry a little bit darker here, so I want to add just a little bit more of that turquoise in with the blue, and that'll ensure that that color dries nice and rich. I might have to go over my signature again there, if that's okay. I want to add a little bit more. Can I get a little bit more yellow? I could probably just get enough yellow in here. And add that right there on either side. The next thing I want to do is make a sort of a smoky blue, like a violet color. So by taking a little bit of phthalo neon pink, a little bit of white, maybe a little bit more. And I'm just going to add a little hint of that coming out of the chimney. And you know, this color is so pretty that maybe we can add, get away with adding a little hint of it in and around these waterfalls. All these pretty pastel colors tend to look nice together. You can't really go wrong. Just a little bit thick here overpowering so I'll just gently take off a little bit of that add a little bit of white because I know it'll dry darker and the next thing I'm going to do is add some light in the windows and really make it look like it's lived in there so I've got a little round brush here once I get it wet, I can twist and roll it and use it like a liner brush. I'm just going to take a little bit leftover neon orange and white, just with the tip of my brush. Just dab where we have some windows. You know, just a couple little dabs. Don't make it. Harder than it is. I'm going to take a little bit more white with that neon orange and just pull a little bit of light right in here Add a little bit in the water. I'm going to pick up a little bit more of my yellow and white and just add little bits 
along the railing going down the stairs. And that's it guys. Well, I hope you learned a lot today and you have fun adding color to your black and white painting. If you found this helpful or enjoyed watching it, just leave a comment below to let me know and like this video. Subscribe for more and I'll see you guys all very soon in my next video. Bye!